There is great power that happens in prayer when your prayers align with the word. If you are a prayer warrior who knows that nothing is impossible with God, and I want you to write that in the comment section right now, right? Nothing is impossible with God. The purpose of prayer is to fulfill the will of God in the earth. The purpose of prayer is to bring heaven to earth, to cultivate the kingdom of heaven throughout the earth. That is the purpose of prayer. Now, the will of God is a fixed river. It does not move. God is going to accomplish his will no matter what. But when I pray according to his will, when I pray according to his word, I'm pulling those broken pieces of creation into alignment with the will of God. Prayer does not change the will of God. Prayer aligns you with God's will. Too often we imagine that prayer is a way to persuade God to do something that he doesn't want to do. Like we're twisting his arm. Who among us is so persuasive that we can convince God to do something? Who among us is so wise, so insightful that we can point out something to God that he didn't see first? So no, prayer is not about getting God to do our will. Prayer is not about getting God to get involved in what we're doing. Prayer involves me in what he is doing. Prayer aligns me to his will. Prayer does not change the direction of the river. Prayer puts me in the river. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the river, in the flow of God's will. If you will commit to praying the will and the word of God, and you will commit to submitting your life to his will, then I want you to write in the comment section right now, I'm jumping in the river. Let the river take you. Flow with what God is doing. When it comes to the will of God, you can't fight it. You can't force it. You can't stop what he's doing and you can't get him to do something that he doesn't want to do. But instead, flow with the will of God. John 15 says this, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask anything you want and it will be granted. So often we want to just focus on the later portion of that. So often we want to just focus on the latter portion of this scripture. You may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. And we quote that part, ask for anything and it will be granted. But what does it say right before? But if you remain in me and what my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Alignment accesses authority. If you remain in him, that's to walk as he walked, that's to surrender to his will, that's to be like him, and his words remain in you, that's to have your heart inclined to his statutes, that's to have your heart inclined to his will. Bend me to your will is what I pray, Lord. Bend me to your will. Make me willing to obey you. I submit my will to you. He bends you toward his will. And in that bending toward the will of God, in becoming aligned with the will of God, then we see true power. Why? Because when we remain in him, and when his words remain in us, what we pray is aligned with his will. Another way we could put it, when you pray God's will, it will be done. When you pray God's word, it will be granted. It's not like some hocus pocus thing where I say these magic words and I say these special ritualized prayers or I pray a special script and that will get God to move and that will get God to respond. No, my friend. When you pray the word of God, you are agreeing with the will of God. That's why it works. Now, what does remain in me or abide in me mean? Let's dig deeper. First John 3, 24 says, whoever keeps his commandments remains in God and God in him. So the scripture here is talking about obedience. And by this, we know that he remains in us by the spirit he has given us. So when we walk in obedience, we remain in him. So knowing what we know from the scripture, that remaining in him is walking in obedience to him, let's read John 15, 7 again. But if you walk in obedience, remain in me, that's what it means. If you walk in obedience to me and my words remain in you, in other words, it transforms your heart, transforms your will, transforms your desires, your desires now align with his will, then you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When I pray his will, that's when there's power. How do I know I'm praying his will? If I see it reflected in his word. First John 3, 21 and 22, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God 
And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Watch this now. Why? Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So because we walk in obedience with him, then when we pray, there's true power. Well, why does that matter? Because the one who walks in obedience towards God is going to pray prayers that align with God's will. Psalm 37, four says this, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, why does this matter? Because when I delight in him, he becomes my desire. When I delight in his presence, when I delight in the glory of who he is, when I delight in his power, his nature, his being, then he becomes my desire. And so he's willing to give me the desires of my heart. Why? Because I've delighted myself in him. When I delight myself in him, my desires change. My nature is transformed. My thoughts are transformed. My mind is renewed. And now I begin to think like him. And not only do I begin to think like him, I begin to desire like him. Let me say that again. When I delight myself in the Lord, he becomes my focus. That focus of who he is, the the, the revelation of his glory begins to transform me. And when I delight in him, I begin to think like he thinks and I begin to desire like he desires. So then when I pray, the desires of my heart now are what he desires. Well, when you begin to delight yourself in the Lord, you gain a compassion for souls who are lost. When you begin to delight yourself in the Lord, you begin to grow more frustrated with the sin nature. When you begin to delight yourself in the Lord, your desire becomes God's will. You begin to love what he loves. You begin to hate what he hates. You want to see accomplished what he wants accomplished. And so when I delight myself in him, my nature is transformed. And therefore, my prayers are transformed. That's why the scripture makes it clear that when we pray in his name or according to his will, or when we pray as someone who obeys his commands, when we delight ourselves in him, then he gives us the desires of our heart. Why? Because delighting ourselves in him transforms the heart and therefore the desires. And so obedience is alignment. Alignment accesses authority. When I obey him, and my heart is inclined toward his statutes, when I begin to think like he thinks and desire like he desires, now I'm praying the word. Now I'm praying his desires. And so that agreement between heaven and earth, nothing can ever stop that. Now I, as a person on earth, I, as a child of God in the earth, come into agreement with God's will in heaven. Well, didn't Jesus tell us to pray this? Did not Jesus tell us to pray that the will of God would be done in earth as it is in heaven? Why would he have us pray that if it wasn't necessary to pray? Why would Jesus tell us? Why would Jesus command us to pray for the will of God to be done in the earth as it is in heaven if it wasn't necessary for us to pray that? Now, I'm not saying that God can't move without us. What I am saying is that God chooses to not move without us in the earth. It's not that he can't, it's that he won't. He chooses to work in partnership with his children. At any moment that God wants, he can just transform the earth. At any moment that God wants, he can do whatever he wants. But he chooses to include you and I in the cultivating of kingdom culture in the earth. And so when we pray in the earth as someone who's aligned with him, our desires are his desires. Our thoughts become more like his. Now we pray in agreement Heaven and earth join hands and it's done. It's done. There's no stopping it. Why? Because you're praying the will of God. You're praying for his desires to be done in the earth. That's why when we pray in his name, it shall be done. That's why when we pray in his authority, it shall be done. That's why when we delight ourselves in the Lord, then we receive the desires of our heart. Now watch this. You can pray for what God promised. Now you begin to align your prayers with his promises. You begin to pray according to his will. You know his will by the word. And you begin to pray with his power 
when you pray according to his promises. You can pray to war in the spirit, Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. You can pray for the safety of your loved ones. It's in his word, 2 Corinthians 1, 11. You can pray for the salvation of your unsaved loved ones, Romans 10, 1. You can pray for the well-being of cities, Jeremiah 29, 7. You can pray for the faith of others. I love this one. You can pray for the faith of others to be strengthened. Luke 22, 32 gives us an example of that. You can pray for leaders and people in positions of authority, 1 Timothy 2, 2 and 3. Whatever God promised, you can pray. And when you pray what God promised, there's power. Why? Because you're aligning yourself now with heavenly things. You're aligning yourself now with the authority of the kingdom of God. And so when you become that vessel who submits to God's will by praying his word, now you're praying with real power. Now you are enforcing what God has already said. God's words have creative power. Our words have cultivating power. Thank God our words can't just cause things to literally and instantly pop into existence. I mean, imagine if believers actually had the power to call things literally into existence. I think there would be a lot of chaos in our world. Maybe when you're driving in traffic on the way to work, you would speak another lane into existence. And then who knows what would go from there because many people would be speaking all sorts of things into existence. I mean, if you have two Christians praying on opposite teams during a football game and both of them are praying for their teams to win, what then manifests there? Or if you're angry with someone and you should pray something out of the flesh, there would be many of our loved ones who wouldn't exist if we had that kind of creative power. So thank God we don't have the exact same power in our words that God's has. We have cultivating power in our words. In other words, we cultivate the culture of heaven. What we speak can encourage or discourage. What we speak can confuse or bring clarity. What we speak can cause lust or cause that lust to weaken its power. What we speak can be deceptive or truthful. What we speak does have effect. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, but creative power is reserved for God's words. Only what we speak, what God has already spoken, do we then see that creative power come into play. Why? Because you and I on our own do not have that creative power. We have cultivating power. God started the world, we steward the world. God created the world, we cultivate the world. We are stewards of God's creation, not the starters of God's creation. So God speaks creatively. We speak with some level of authority, but just to cultivate. So now when we repeat what God has said, when we pray what God has promised, then and only then do we see that creative power come into play. If God said healing, we can speak healing. If God said deliverance, we can speak deliverance. If God said that a miracle should happen at that moment and we align our prayers with his will for that moment, that miracle will happen. That's how it works to align yourself with the will and the word of God. When we pray according to the word, we're praying according to his will. And when we pray according to his will, we are accessing authority through alignment and we're truly backed by the power of heaven. I wanna pray with you right now. I wanna pray that you would be given revelation of the word by the Holy Spirit. And then I'm gonna pray that you would be given faith to believe the word so that when you pray, when you align your prayers with the word of God and the will of God, you would begin to see results. Father, I thank you that by your Holy Spirit, you're bringing revelation of your word. I pray for that one receiving this now. And I ask you, Father, to by your Holy Spirit, cause them to know your word. Give us insight, I pray, Lord. Teach us your will, teach us your ways, teach us your nature. And also, Lord, I'm asking that you would stir their faith. Stir their faith to believe the promises that you have made, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I want you to say it because you believe it, right? Amen. Well, I believe God brought you here for a purpose. I believe that something was ministered to you that will help you. And now I'm asking for your help that we might reach even more people. All of our content is given away for free. Why? Because Jesus said, freely you receive, so freely give. We don't charge for the gospel. All of the content is free. 
All of our events are free. Our online school is free. The way we support it is by faith in God and God moves the hearts of his people to give free will offerings to help us continue to reach more people. And so you believe in expanding the kingdom. You believe in soul winning. You believe in seeing lives transformed through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm asking you to lend this ministry a helping hand. Get involved today by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate to give a single donation or davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly ministry supporter. Now, if you were blessed by this teaching, make sure you check out everything you need to know about praying in the Holy Spirit. And thank you for watching. Remember until next time, nothing is impossible with God.